Okay. Hello. Welcome to the War Report. I'm your host, Cyrus, joined by Quan. This is the show where we talk about NXT and AEW. Uh, how's everything? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of drained. It's been one of the weeks in wrestling where I'm just like, boy, I can't wait for this shit to be done with. Yeah. Um, I think we avoided, we avoided one, um, one, one missile this week, but we got hit with like five other ones. So <laughs> <laughs> I ain't get hit with shit. I was just watching other motherfuckers, uh, get blown up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just saw, I was like, yeah, we're going to have to talk about this. And <laughs> It's so silly. It's such a it's such a silly thing, but yeah, I, I mean, outside of you know just wrestling news, just it's been a really draining week for me as well, just at, for like work purposes. But you know, we powering through it. It is what it is. All right. Well, our league, I must say, uh, updates on sort of things that I reiterated last week, or you know, talked about last week. I'm on season two of Better Call Saul. Um, I'm on season nine of Bad Girls Club. Not saying zooming through, that, it. Zooming not, through it. Not saying that I breezed through six and seven. We skipped uh six, seven, and eight. We skipped those two. Uh my pal said that they just wanted to watch nine. And so far, there's been like in the two episodes, there's been like seven fights. So I like this season. Right. <laughs> I, I, I like violence, man. Um that's about it. Uh, let's 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 get it. Let's just get this shit out of the way because, <laughs> boy, Jesus Christ, this shit has been annoying me. Uh, you know, you since start? I heard it. Um, I would like to start with you can listen to me on the A show uh, this week with Justin and Duggar because I won a, a spontaneous raffle in our uh, Discord <laughs> chat, which you can join our Discord and participate in the raffle at patreon.com forward slash the A show RNC. And I wish that this news came uh, when I was a guest so Jesse could do a lot of heavy lifting because, dog, I really don't care about this shit. All right. So Stephanie McMahon steps down as uh, the co-CEO that she was with uh, Nick Khan and, the sale, and, you know, their sale rumors. I would l- first like to start with I when they did the co- CEO thing I thought it was like an interim thing anyway so I'm I'm shocked that everybody else is shocked but I guess like I must have missed something I always thought it was interim I I I do but the timing of it like okay yeah I agree like yeah it was interim but I think the people are more looking at the timing of it and just that as soon as Vince comes back Stephanie, you know, Stephanie resigned. I, a lot of people, I had people message me saying, oh, Vince got her fired or something like that. But I didn't really see how that made any sense. But, um, yeah, I, th- I just think may, may, my interpretation of all this was like, Steph knew what was going on. And she's like, I don't want nothing to do with this. I don't need to be here. Like, you or know what she, I mean? Like, she, I, w- she was just going to hold it down while he was gone. And then, you know, yeah, we'll see what happens there. I like, I, I. I seriously thought that it was interim. So when she changed, like when it happened, I was just like, oh, okay, so she's going to go to chief branding officer, like as, you know, her previous position. And then, uh, you know, Vince and Khan are going to go back and do the thing. Like, so I don't know what the whole big deal was um, about, about like Stephanie showing up or whatever. The whole Vince coming back thing, I was just like, he can't, uh, I spoke about it on the A show already. Um, but I was just like, he's, you know, he came to work, you know, he didn't want to do a zoom call meeting. That's it. Yeah. Um, that, that news for me didn't really make too much of a difference because I'm kind of with you on it. Like it didn't really affect it until it starts affecting the TV show. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't really, it, I, it pertained no real interest to me personally. Um, I never, ever, any other c- product i've ever consumed i never cared who the ceo of the company was like i don't i don't i wouldn't even know because it doesn't affect me yeah. um but you know not even 12 hours later <laughs> we start seeing some tweets you know just around 9 9 p.m during uh nxt time start seeing some tweets from uh you know uh notable members of the wrestling media but you know they were very vague tweets and not really 
speaking on what it is. And then, you know, as the hour goes on, we're hearing stories about WWE's been sold already. Mm-hmm. By, uh, by, by Ker- Kermit t- uh, 215. Oh, I don't even want to get there yet. I just want to just keep going. With, like, oh, okay, like, okay. Go ahead, like, go ahead, go ahead. First, we hear it's sold. Mm-hmm. Then it starts coming in where people are hearing this from. A Reddit user named Kermit125, who... The GOAT! <laughs> who has may have gotten one or two things right on Reddit, and ever since then, people just kind of take his word, even though he, I've, from what I've been told, he's missed a lot of other, probably missed a lot more than he's gotten right. Mm-hmm. But then it just went ran with wildfire. We had you know mediums confirming it. Um, I forgot my man's name from the uh, boxing organization. He was the biggest one. It was like, yeah, no, they they sold it already. It's over. And then, you know, at at this point. Sean Ross Sapp was online kind of like, hey, I haven't heard nothing about it. And then we've heard from other people, you know, we've heard all the sources. People, people within the company are like, we didn't hear nothing about that. And so, yeah, we're kind of there. And then by the next morning, Ariel Hawani was like, nah, that's not true, bro. I already called him up. You know, he got Nick Khan, I mean, Nick Khan on the speed dial. They're like, yo, what's up with this dog? And he was like, yeah, it ain't nothing. I would imagine. Um, So, yeah, it's... It was a big hubbub on the internet last night about really just a rumor out of nowhere. And it was really, you know, and it really just sucks. It was really nasty just kind of seeing the comments coming from it. A lot of xenophobic or racist type stuff. It was just like, all right, guys, what are we doing? Like, we're, we're this fear mongering that the, the media has been doing recently is, is getting out of, out of control. Yeah. Uh, from the Dragon Lee signing to the Vince returning, and then people just being like, "Oh, pr- please, please pray for the wrestlers that now Vince is back. Uh, they they might not be on TV anymore." And then you know, because motherfuckers don't want to read, um, you can clearly see in the like the press release that WWE put out. They were just like, "Yeah, he's back," and then like the quote was just like, "Everything's cool," you know, the way the ship's been running. Um, he kind of just wants to be there for the potential sale or whatever uh, is going on with uh, the TV's rights deal. And then just kind but, of, ec- but, wait. but oh, he could be lying. He could be lying. I mean, shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I keep seeing. Yeah. He could yeah. be lying. We could not, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. And, you know and, and you know what? He could be lying, but guess what? As of right now, that's not. Yeah. That's where I'm at with it. Yeah. So what are we doing here? We're, we're, we're just going to hope it happens so you can say that you are right. That you're, you don't want it to happen, but you're hap- you're hoping that it's right. Like, why are you hoping for the worst possible outcome? Yeah. Oh, you you're, don't even get me started. Don't even like, start. I saw, I saw people writing, you saved me Zane eulogy yesterday. I'm like, yo, what is going on? Oh you yeah. Stuff? Cause I, the Saudi Arabia like, thing, man, yeah, they, made like, be, bro, what? they made to be writing uh, <laughs> Ali's on. eulogy. That's the first motherfucker I'm clipping. Um, I just, I, I just think, uh, I just thought it was absolutely ridiculous the way that people uh, were acting. Um, yeah, like I don't know. I, I kind of already said my piece on it, so I'm, I'm just kind of bored of the whole thing. My thing is, is that when I woke up this morning and all of it was, uh, you know, done and over with, everybody that was like, you know, saying it was a done deal. I was hearing rumors, da, 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 this and that. They were wrong this morning, and then they just went, oh, well. Motherfucker, you don't get to just do a oh, well. Like, you was, like, you know, saying shit was certain, bro. Like, I would say I would at least cover my ass a little bit and be like, hey, man, I hope that it's not, you know, they're not selling to whatever group. Uh, If they are. Are they really sold? Question mark. You know, like kind of cover your ass a little bit with the way you phrase and word things. Like this shit is uh fucking nuts. But yeah, that's my whole spiel about the Saudi Arabia. Th- I mean, uh, the the selling thing. Like I'm tired of it, honestly. Like if it's not gonna happen, then it's over. And then uh, just to talk about like Vince and the board of directors thing, I see at my job the board of directors they kind of come around all the time. Uh, it's small scale. So like, you know, whatever they want to have a board, uh, actually they're going to be having one next Wednesday, but it's just like, I don't really know what these motherfuckers do. 
So why the fuck am I act like I know I'm gonna pretend what uh and know what WWE board of directors do? I have no idea. Look, I, this as, is that as a as a fan, why should I give a shit? Like if um, it's not affecting the TV product, then I think I'm fine. That's where I'm at with it. Um, I it would be very interesting if it was the Saudi Arabian government that buys it, and it's still a possibility that it could be the Saudi Arabian government. I mean, if the word kind of got out there. There might be some smoke to the fire. There might be. It, it might It might be that they're the highest bidder, which is like, you know, yeah, that would be that fucking could, surprising. The money talks. That's what I'm saying. It, so it could happen. But yeah, until like as a consumer of the product, until it really affects like the viewing experience, I'm not as yeah. big a deal to me as it is. But I felt like it was something we need to talk about because obviously it's the biggest wrestling story. Oh, no, story yeah. And, yeah. And, no, it's and, fine. It's fine. It's fine. If, and if it does sell, probably the biggest wrestling story of our lifetimes. You know, what I mean, what could happen? Like we, yeah. we don't even know. TV deals coming up next next year. It's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. Um, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you know, this is a night where people kind of understand. Okay, maybe we should like vet vet. Um, you know, this information that we're getting. You know, oh. from reliable <laughs> sources. We're not listening Ooh. to fucking what's that guy named Castle? <laughs> Ca- Why am Ca- I getting my name? Uh, Ca- Ca- Castle. Uh, what, what's that other motherfuckers people keep saying that you are? Uh, z- zero news. Oh, z- uh, zero news. <laughs> stop, po- stop, yo! If you if you in the Discord right now and you listen to this, stop putting that nigga's tweet in the chats, bro. Stop that shit. Um, what is it? Yeah, I don't know. Then what is it? Uh, Wrestling News Observer. They was like talking about some shit, and then they were kind of like saying that like. You know, kind of just saying that they were wrong, but being assholes about it, like saying like "fuck us," and NBC man, they don't know shit or whatever. When like actual reputable sources got a hold of it and said like it's not happening, they're just like yeah. you know they debunked it. Fuck them, blah blah blah, this and that. And I was just like, that's weird. You're wrong. Yeah, I, I think um, the last week I've seen a lot of people not taking accountability for their for the being wrong on the internet recently. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully we don't have that again. And hopefully, I mean, ideally, I'd rather than not <laughs> sell it to the Saudi Arabian government <laughs> just because I just don't know what that means. That sounds that sounds like something. Um, hey, and man. I do and I do think people will walk out if it came down to that. I really do. Yeah. I, but I, I uh, do. so I, I, I rather as of, not have that happen. But as of right now, that little Reddit post seemed more like a prediction than like a you know, it is sounding the prediction. He said it was he he made it sound no, like but it he was, was but he was just like you know, Nostradamus WWE sold to the uh, Saudi well, uh, uh, to, public trust. To, to to be fair, Kermit one two five did not say he got say, didn't he wasn't the one who said he got sold to the Saudi Arabian guy. He just said he got sold. No, I believe I believe that Reddit post was edited and said it was just uh he no, like I took the Saudi. I, 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 I checked. He checked it, it is not edited. No, it was, it was. He just said it was sold. He never said it was to the Saudi Arabian government. Right, Someone else said it was the Saudi Arabian government. Shout, and uh, it went from there. My my bad for the slander, Mister uh, Mister Kermit. Uh, Kermit. Sorry, 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 sorry for my Philadelphia folks listening right now. Y'all good. Um, but yeah, as of right now, like we're just gonna have to wait and see. And then you know, if it does affect the product, well, shit, it ain't affecting the product I'm watching. I doubt they're gonna touch NXT. <laughs> they should after that this episode they need to somebody need to uh yeah it, it wasn't too great that shit was fucking nuts <laughs> was um, i'm i'm not i'm not as down on it as like everybody else is because i wasn't really paying attention i'm not gonna lie that too um, this is by the second hour i was i was so enthralled into the timeline it was way more interesting than whatever was going on in tv uh i think after gender came out it was like my interest <laughs> kind of just like tanked a little bit but we'll get to that um Tony Khan is alluding to AEW house shows in the future. Would you go? Um, maybe a house show. I might if it's a house show because I feel like they're probably it's probably um. If the tickets are cheaper than the, yeah. like the tapings that they do, then like absolutely. Like if I could get in that motherfucker for forty five dollars, yeah, you'll see me there. Yeah. Also, <laughs> it's not it's not even alluding anymore. He pretty much said, "Yeah, in November we'll be doing house shows." And I think sure. that's probably good for them. Get Damn, um, some of the younger guy. Yeah, I think it takes a while to book them. Whatever venues are gonna do, that'd be interesting to see what kind of venues is gonna do. Um, oh man, the butt, the butt fucking venues, boy. The, the armory, definitely yeah. hit the armory. But um, 
Yeah, I think that'd be that'd be um, it's good for I think it'd be good for a lot of the uh, younger guys. You get some more on the road reps. It, it helps for NXT. I don't see why it wouldn't help for AEW. If they did like a Saturday house show every week, I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, tick, uh, ticket prices matter to me uh, for that. Like, I, w- I would gladly be there, but um, I wonder if I could find the tickets to the one house show they did have. Like, uh, like um, when they were here in Miami, I paid for like the Rampage and AEW thing. So I spent, I think I spent like uh like one to two hundred dollars for both i yeah, got pretty decent better. seats too um so i don't really um we'll see what happens honestly i'll pull up though i'll pull up though yeah if, if, if the tickets is right i'll pull up bring a couple friends and then we get drunk and laugh uh so that's cool mandy rose speaks on her mm-hmm. nxt release um and a gut punch at the title loss. And I was just like, whatever. Um, you know I read, what? I, I, yeah. she, uh, she's annoying because she knows she knows what it was. I don't know why. She knows what she's doing. Trying to act. She knows what you did. You know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are still kind of like, you know, still on their little activists or like kind of tight about, you know, what happened with that. But I'll say this. There's a there's a conflicting there's a conflicting little uh things in her sentence uh that I'm gonna pull up in a second because I tweeted it and I was just like I tweeted one report and I tweeted the next and I was just like these two informations are clashing with one another and you could fool them <laughs> you can't fool me and I think it's when she's uh when she said that she got fired without warning and that's not gonna work um she said that she was never told that her uh Her fan time account was the reason why she was fired. But she says that uh, in their uh, confidentiality clause uh, is something that she can't talk. uh, She can't talk about. But WWE warned her to take the account down and she she uh, complied. Now, you and me both know, thanks to the horn dogs uh, down at the (laughs) A-Show Discord chat, is that she complied for about a week. Okay, yep. they said, "Yo, chill out," and then she went on her little fan time thing and said, "Hey, yo, guys, I'm gonna have to keep it low. I'm gonna have to lay low for a little bit. I'm gonna need y'all to shush real quick." I seen it. I seen. I seen the post, not Photoshop. We saw and the then, screen shot, bro. And then, it. and then, the day, like the, I think, like the day after you <laughs> post something on fan time, you get fired. What do you think? Like, does that have to be explained to you? Hey, I'm gonna look. And and I'm gonna and, 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 I'll, and I'll also say this: it's not it, it. What she posted wasn't the normal, you know. Oh man, you know, just little bikini by the poolside or some shit like that. Nope. She was in the shower with her husband, naked, grinding on each other. I wasn't even gonna bring that. I would talk about the one when they were straight, damn near having sex on camera. At, at one point, they were just having sex through the clothes. It was close enough. Yeah, like Charlie it, dry, dry humping her, uh, dry humping her man. Like this shit is crazy, yo. Like you, um, you, can, you're not, you're not gonna fool me. <laughs> and uh, wait, I'll let fool- you get your thoughts in before. Oh, uh, I got. I, they're like speaking of fooling people, I've seen some of the content. <laughs> I was about to get to this. I, hey, I've yo. seen it. I, look, I, shout out to her for getting that bag. I'm never going to hate on you getting your bag. You do what you want. You know what I mean? I'm happy for you. But I got to be honest. This is because I love you. The content? I, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know if you can sustain those kind of subscriptions with that kind of content. At this point, you're a free woman. So I, I say we might as well just get, b- get Be a real beater, bro. Let's, let's, like, let's, let's really just do this. If we go and do it, let's go all the way. I think that, uh, what is it? Mandy Rose made her mill uh, off fan time. And I thought that was cool. That's cool. Get your money. I definitely think that content is going to be willing, uh, like kind of like, you know, nose diving once people realize you ain't a real beater. You're not, you're not, you're not really with it. You feel me? But but, but, jo- but joke, jokes aside though, like I uh, think. Um, I was joking. <laughs> you still joking? No, I mean. <laughs> On a, on a more serious note, to be more mature about this, uh, I think we saw the same thing kind of with Zelina Vegas. Her like, remember when she got yeah. released in her Twitch? They were mm-hmm. going crazy with the subs and stuff. 
you just like I don't think people really realize, even wrestlers probably to a degree don't realize how hard it is when you're independently making content, how hard it is to maintain that and to maintain subscriptions, especially if you're not in the public eye like that anymore. Um like yeah, I'm sure I, I there we could look at the stats of Zelina Vegas like Twitch, yeah, I'm sure uh, by when she got released by the time when she was like, you know, fully gone, the numbers probably dropped crazy. I mean, so, so it's harder to maintain subscription when you don't when your face is not there and people aren't always seeing you all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure this, that I'm and I'm just gonna assume you know with man unless you put out content like heavy all the time. I don't know. What, I mean, I don't, I'm not keeping up with their fan time, but like it's gonna be hard to maintain the subscription. So I hopefully, I mean, low key, I think she'll be back in like six months. <laughs> uh she <laughs> she said that like uh she said like you know is she gonna go back and it was just like never say never and it's just like you know what it, w- w- once this fan time shit dry up man i'm back with it yeah i'm back my um, bad my, my bad hunter my bad sean i was wild my bad i was on i was on some freak shit that's okay. wild and, you then, know what I mean? and then when that happens we welcome her back with open arms because hey, i i liked mandy i liked I'm mandy Rose when she was doing it nxt you know so it is what it is. Um, Mandy, stop fucking around, man. Come on back, man. <laughs> come, come back home. Come back, come back home. You, you, you're in the women's division. You see what the women's division doing right now because you left? I mean, it's not the... Uh, nah, I'm just playing. I'm, play, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. It's, not, it's, not, it's not the... It's not the... <laughs> you, but, you know, a vital piece is uh, uh, missing. You know, a piece that I'd like to have. You feel me? We like, um, wanted her gone for months. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, well, I'm not, not about any... to be gone for months. Well, not fired. I just say she need to go up. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you're talking about if she goes to the main roster. Yeah, I was saying I was saying okay. go up to the main roster. I'm not saying right. I want her gone. No, don't don't put them words in my mouth, man. But uh, that is it for the news. But I had some topics that I saved that I never put on the uh, on the docket. Um. All right, so. Uh, the Young Bucks are in contract negotiation with AEW. We'll see what they go. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, Kenny Omega is uh, contract is also up for, you know, just contract news, uh, stuff like that. And then Jay White, I believe, Tom, uh, Jay White contract is going to be, uh, is like up in question. So, Tama Tonga is getting looked at by WWE. And I thought, I, it, was, I thought it was Hikaleo. Is Tama Tonga I, too? Yeah. Ugh, I don't want him there. I hate Tama Tonga. I'm sorry. I don't. <laughs> I'm not sorry, a fan I, of that guy at all. I'm not a fan of Hikaleo either. I think they're. I don't know. I don't. I don't know ass. much. I don't know much about Hikaleo, but Tama Tonga, no, thank you. I've seen enough I, to know. That guy's not enough. it. You know, actually, um, you know, he kind of remind me of hmm. Jinder. Like he kind of reminds me. Like he just kind of like. I'm not interested in this guy at all. No matter what he's doing. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> that guy. Um, and then. Uh, AEW Fight Forever will be part of IGN's Fan Fest. Um, and then you could talk to Dan Housen, Nyla Rose, and Evo Uno about the game. And I'm just like, why isn't Kenny Omega there to talk about the game? He been off that shit. He ain't been on. He ain't been on that for. Probably yeah, more. but I was. But like you know, he was the dude that was doing like the dev updates and stuff like that. I was just like, why don't you? ask him to, like he seems like he truly seems like the one that is most invested with the video game and then like he's just not around to talk about the video game in public with folks i don't even know they, they we still don't have a release date bro yeah there's still a placeholder date that, which that's is just still, like that's still concerning hey man another wwe 2k game is gonna go, come out and it's gonna make your game look worse <laughs> yeah and i want you kind of you kind of want to get this motherfucker out the door um take take what kind of dollars you can get um i'm sure micro uh because microsoft also gave them the game pass thing um yeah. deal so uh i can't I, 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 I still think it's, i think it's gonna sell well by the way oh, i think yeah. it'll sell i mean for like that level of getting obviously not a triple a title so um, but like i think for what i think people are still really excited for nothing nothing i've seen from it was like damn i really gotta get this i might catch mm-hmm. it on sale i might catch it on sale Maybe. i on I honestly wish it came out when I had Game Pass because I would have kept yeah. it on Game Pass. But like my uh, what is it? My free trial up, so <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> uh, and then now we can get into AEW Dynamite. All right, AEW Dynamite. Um, is there is this a special show or is it just AEW Dynamite? It felt is this, uh, is it Dynamite at the Forum? Okay, it, it felt a little special. Maybe because it was just at the forum, but they probably yeah, should have the forum. They 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 probably should have thrown in a uh, what is it? 
it's not the forum, so it's in Los Angeles. I don't know. They can probably come up with something. Uh, but I thought this show was much better than the show last week. So I can say that this was a pretty decent show. Um, I, thought, I thought this was a good episode. Also, I want to give a shout out to AW because I think they got some momentum. Um, I'm, I can't momentum. believe I'm say that. I went, I went, listen, oh, hear me out. Hear me out. I didn't mind last week. And then okay. ramp, and the Rampage was actually good. And then Battle of the Belts, surprise to me, was actually good. So, <laughs> I, I mean, like, that's three good shows in a row. I'm very impressed. Uh, I think they're p- firing on, I'm not going to say all cylinders, but they're doing a much better job, you know, starting off the year. Um, also, I think that's that fresh can of paint and having the new setup and everything. I don't know why. I just feel, I, I feel like the production is a little bit different. They might have a different production team. I'm not sure. But they've had, they've had some hiccups. Oh, you know, like mic problems and stuff, but mm-hmm. I, I like I, I like what they've done. So so far, 10, 10 days into the year, I, I've enjoyed what AEW's been doing. Okay. Hold on. That dude that said uh <laughs> Mercedes Mercedes Monet that was gonna be at AEW uh as Sarai's partner, he I believe he deleted his Twitter account. So that's funny. The whole account? Oh, they were they were on yeah. his ass. I saw I saw it. I, they were on his Good. ass. She didn't show up. I thought she was gonna show up. I'll be honest. I thought she was gonna uh, maybe I come was, out to like even the odds when it was um Cheetah. The when the angle didn't go how I thought it was and how it honestly should have went, I was just like, oh okay, yeah. Uh she's not here. <laughs> I saw Tony Storm also- come out, no problem, and I say, Yeah, she's not here. <laughs> But also, like, I saw people are like genuinely upset. I'm like, I'm not really upset. Like, they didn't I, promise it. I thought it was kind of weird you know, for Britt to, Brit to do the Brit to do the thing where you know she did a little wink and said mm-hmm. the boss. But besides that, I wouldn't. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. Here, Go ahead. I I wouldn't say they didn't. Pro- well, like, obviously they didn't promise it. But when you have, you know, literally your trusted sources and the people that literally speak for you week in and week out say that Mercedes Monet is going to be there. These guys are normally never wrong about AEW news because they get fed it. So it's just like, of course, people talking are going to like, talking, expect- talking about Alvarez like, uh, and um, Yeah. Did they say it? Yes. Okay. Ow. Um, and then he was just like, uh, I hit my mic stand. But then he was just like, uh, I believe, on uh, on the thing where they were talking about the uh, the sale not happening, he was also still hedging that, like, uh, you know, Mercedes Monet was going to be there. But mm. we'll get into that match and all of that. But guess what? She's not here. Uh, <laughs> so I know a lot of people are watching, say, for the 9 tw- uh, 920 and said, <laughs> no banks? <laughs> no money? I'm out of here. Um, but now, nah, if you feel that a- AEW has some momentum, that's great. I think they just started, like, you know, walking a little bit. So that's a little bit of momentum. Not a lot, though. I thought this episode was actually okay, even though I was bored. I enjoyed this. Um, it was definitely a wrestling heavy episode, for sure. Yes, which is well, and they yeah, were good matches, it, and they were you know good what? matches. Yeah, it's way more wrestling heavy than last week's episode, but I felt like the two talking segments that they did have were was not like, good. <laughs> why you, no cut this shit? Absolutely, yeah, like they they were not good. Whenever wrestling wasn't happening. It was like the the show was at like bottom level bad. Um, let's get into but, it. Yeah, let's get into it. So we got Hangman Page versus John Moxley, and I I thought this match was very short for like the kind of feud that they were having. I, I expect this to go a little bit longer. But, Did you? I thought um, they had a good amount of time. Nah, like, I, I, like 15, I was, 15 minutes. I was they expecting had to, uh, they had a lot to put into this episode. They had a yeah yeah. I mean. If, the, if these two would have cut into MJF and K- Jericho's mic time, uh, yeah. it would have been, you know, uh, better allocated uh, towards the actual wrestling on the show. Um, but nah, I thought this match was cool. Um, Hangman Page is good to go. That, 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 that was really good to see. Um, do, you yeah, think Mox, cool. do you think Mox is finally going on vacation? They kind of uh, gave him a little injury angle. I don't. I don't know if they did the injury angle to kind of mirror what happened on the yes. last match, Wait, or which, they were doing it to write him off. I. I, I definitely I think they could probably that, do both. Yeah, I mean, it, they could do both, but I definitely, yeah, can, I definitely thought it was. Off. 
I definitely thought it was more of just to mirror the last match um, that they had. But then I was also just like, John Mosley fucking leaning. He got drool coming out of his mouth. I said, all right, bro, he ain't hit you that hard now. <laughs> I was like, all right, stop this shit, bro. This boy is selling, selling. Mm-hmm. But um, if Moxley's going to take some time away a little bit, I'm it's curious. Three, what three, three weeks off, you know? Yeah, really please, refreshed. please separate, like, kind of, like, push him away turn, a little bit. Turn his phone off. If I'm Renee, yeah. I'm turning that nigga's phone off. He probably doesn't have a phone knowing him. <laughs> Weird. Um, I'm curious where Hangman Page goes after this, but like we kind of need to create some distance uh, from Moxley, honestly, because I feel like as long as Moxley's on the show, there's kind of like a little gap or a barrier for people to kind of like progress a little bit. Because I feel like you'll always run into Moxley as your kind of like roadblock. And you're probably going to lose. Yeah. So with him like kind of gone, you can see, I, I would hope people focusing on the title picture But, oh, also, and then we get another return who might be in the title picture. I wish he said it, but he didn't because he's a coward. Um, Adam Cole return, baby. (laughs) No, I did did like this talking segment. I enjoyed that. No, I I like, that's why I didn't mention it with MJF and Jericho. I did like (laughs) this one a lot. My only problem with this one is just that it's bad news for, like, the bad news, but not for me, for the AEW locker room. I don't like that. Please go for the fucking title. You still have your right to it. Actually, no, uh, because he lost that uh, Forbidden Door. But go for the title. Go for something. TNT, Atlantic, uh, you know, whatever. Go for a title. I don't care what it is. Go for something. I wouldn't be mad at Cole and Darby. I wouldn't be mad at it either. I just gear this motherfucker towards a title because just saying that it's trouble for an AEW, uh, you know, it's trouble for the AEW. AEW locker room well that just means he's going to be on rampage or you know dark or just beating uh uh dynamite just beating up random motherfuckers that we don't care about do you think they put him with Taven and and, uh Mike Bennett that that was a squad that was his crew right yeah uh the kingdom or whatever I mean they've been on tv a lot that'd be nice I think uh what is it Matt Taven and Mike Bennett they seem healthier than the other two jokers he was with Hey, I saw an update from Kyle O'Reilly. It don't. It don't. Sound, I'll be honest. With you, it don't sound. Yeah, good. it don't sound good. Um, I think you know we should really be pushing you know Adam Cole more as a solo act. Like we can't be, we can't wait for this shit anymore. Um, yeah, I just, they're, they're, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait anymore for that. Um, but yeah, like let's let's get this guy going towards the title. Like next week. Or, you know, a few weeks from now, this motherfucker's going to be wrestling Dante Martin or some shit. And then, like, that shit's going to go nowhere. We don't need that for him. This is his big This is his big return. Like, let's start, you know, pushing him towards something. But, like, I feel that that way about a lot of wrestlers in AEW. So, it is what it is. Um, we get uh, Takeshita, uh, Shida, whatever. Um versus Brian Danielson. And then we get the really shitty, terrible, long-witted MJF promo. Uh, I think, like, the less said about this promo, the better, but I'm going to say a lot. (laughs) Floor is yours. Hey, man. Terrible stuff here. Like, when when he said Konnichiwa, I said, oh, the fruit not even on the fruit not even hanging low. The fruit is buried, bro. This shit is so low. It's on the floor. That's through the floor. This shit is ridiculous. And then obviously, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, that's you know, uh that, that that's in pretty poor taste or whatever. And then everybody was just like, oh, well, you know, he's a heel. I was just like, we still doing that for people. He he's just a heel. We do we doing to separate the art from the artist, man. So so I'm not from like a morality standpoint. I don't really care that it was like a racist thing because it's like he's playing a character and he's the bad guy. I don't care about that. I just think it's lame. It's just, it's just easy cheap heat. It's 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 I it's that's what bothered me more than the actual like what he said. It's just like yo, all right, come on, it's so ugh, okay, it's so I, lame. Okay, I agree with that last part, but not the first part. I do agree. About it's, it's cheap. It's like hanging fruit, it's, but. Oh. He's he's playing a heel, right? But yeah. what happened 
to creative, compelling dialogue. You can still be an asshole to this person without even having to dabble, not even having to be in the realm. You know, like you could be far from serving a motherfucker or microaggression as possible, but MJF is just not creative enough to do that. And that's why, with all the hype that surrounds this motherfucker, with all the fucking dick writers he has, how often he gets gassed for, you know, his promos and shit like that, this is the, like, is this, this is good to y'all? I will, I don't know why, maybe because they give him more freedom, but since he's came back, their promos have not been good. I don't know. I don't know what happened in his time gone. I mean, I never, I would never a big fan of the style of, of um, you know, a promo he was doing earlier, but like I, I still think it was better quality back then than whatever he's doing right now. Right now, I just feel like he's it's rambling. Him. He doesn't know where he like. He didn't did no direction. Dog, he was talking about goat fucking last week, bro. This dude <laughs> is like he. The joke book is dry, bro. Yeah, it's, it's. I don't know. Even his biggest fan, Jim Cornette, was just like the goat fucking. What the fuck is that? Let's get this shit out of here. Like this shit is with it. Excuse me. This shit's sad, yo. It's just embarrassing. This, this is your talk. Like, this is your, you know, the promo guy. This, this is the guy that, you know, oh, man, when I have this stick in my hand, it's a deadly weapon. Like, come on, son. This dude's garbage, son. And then what is it? Uh, what is it? When he when he passed, uh, passed off the mic to him and then he spoke in Japanese and then he was like, we speak English here. Seriously, no, he, said, he, he said we speak American. Yeah, whatever. And and I know that's to you know kind of be like you know he's playing the part of a dumb American. That's what a dumb American person would say, blah blah, blah or whatever. But it was just like, come on, sign. Like, is, is this the best dialogue we got? This motherfucker is dabbling, and like, I think Rush Hour Two is a great movie. But like, come on, son, you 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 are in Rush Hour Two realms of fucking garbage here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then I thought, I, I honestly thought it could have stopped there. The promo could have literally stopped there. That would have been nice. That would have been great. When he started going around, pointing at all the celebrities in the room, I said, if you want us to let us know that celebrities are here, just cut to, just do a camera cut to them. You do not have to acknowledge them in this promo where MJF goes on and on and on and on and on. He was trying, he was trying to do his stand up impression for, LA yeah. for the, LA. I'm like, bro, this is. This is a wrestling show. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, people would say that, oh, man, you know. I'm harsh on AEW or whatever, but even when Roman Reigns was doing his little stand up shit or his little SNL monologue with uh, with Sami Zayn and them the other day, I was just like, all right, wrap this shit up. Promos is going on way too long nowadays, man. Niggas forgetting how to wrestle, saying. And then honestly, like. Maybe MJF should be used sparingly. Like, put him on the Roman Reigns schedule where he just, sometimes, he's just not around. That's perfectly fine. Like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't need to see him next week. He doesn't need to have a promo next week. We know he's the champ. Let's give, like, a little video vignette real quick. That's all. Not, not even that. I, d- I need complete silence. I just need some wrestling. I, d- I just I mean, need, we can say I need Brian TV Davidson audience. wrestling. We can say the TV audience, but, you know. In the live one, crowd wants to see MJF. But you know, lo, uh, what is it? You know, separation or, you know, makes the heart grow fonder or whatever. Like, whatever that fucking phrase goes. Like, keep him away for a little bit. And then when he comes back out, he could get a pop. Like, a bigger pop. Not the general shit that he gets normally. That's it. And, uh, well, that's not it. <laughs> to, do, to do this promo... You know, MJF getting all the heat and blah, 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 this and that. And then you go to a face versus face match. I'm just like, we're like, <laughs> there's a misdirection of where like all the, like that kind of heat just goes. Cause like once MJF leaves, it doesn't go into the story of the match really. Cause the story of the match is just Daniel Bryanson just needs to win. And then uh, Takesha is a loser anyway. Like he doesn't have a winning record in AEW. So it's just like, it's not going to create any doubt that, you know, he's going to stop Brian in his path. I agree. Um, match was good. <laughs> yeah, the match was good. Um, was I'll, I'll good. say that. Uh, before we go on to our next topic, 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> nah, you're good. You're good, man. I was. I'm. 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 I'm pretty much with you on everything you said. Okay. But so yeah, we can go. <laughs> um, I think what would make. I think what would be interesting that would make this like uh, it just would add a little inter- interesting wrinkle into uh this is that so he has to kind of win every I guess like every match or like a certain amount of matches uh like it's a race to be the number one contender before February eighth, which is like in three uh about like three weeks right maybe. Daniel Bryson, uh, Brian Danielson could lose some matches and they'd be like, you know, the next one would be like, oh, I have to really win this one so I can get it. Like, let's kind of create some doubt or like, you know, some kind of stress or like something like make us believe that he might not be the number one contender. And then you could probably have like another like uh, Hangman Page or Adam Cole kind of get some wins as well and they'll be like sneaking up right behind him and it'll be like if he doesn't win this match you know if he doesn't win this match on rampage or whatever then you know adam page gets a another whatever the fuck uh he becomes number one contender and not danielson like you know maybe give him like a race or like a competition with another motherfucker or something because it's i'm kind of just tired of the general just like ladder thing like there needs to be something more that's about it i'm now i'm finish <laughs> and scene <laughs> uh next we get our main event the trios ladder match uh man this match was really good in 2017 man look at this point we're on match seven we know what it is that's all, that's all I really got. Um, it wasn't bad. It was cool. I, I didn't. I wasn't like bored watching it. It was fine. They did the, the move. That one spot where um, I forgot which Jackson brother was. He tried to do like a senton, and like he was supposed to miss the senton, but it was, like just as like his like his hamstrings. I was like, yeah, I know that shit hurt. I would have been done. I wouldn't have been able to get up off of that one. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, that spot was um, the uh, what the joint the, the pile, pile driver on the ladder. That was a cool spot. Um, what's another one? Probably another one. Yeah, yeah, everybody got their shit in. That's all I can really say about it. Um, yeah, that's normal. Uh, that's normally how the match go. As far as the result, <laughs> boy, did that make a uh, Lucha Bros look like some losers. I mean, usual. Yeah. Uh, they blew a three-one lead. Um, kind of just is what it is at this point. Um. I I don't know. I just feel like the well like the title has to gain prestige, obviously, but like to do all this for the trios titles is nuts. <laughs> this is some damn trios belts. It's fucking crazy. Um, but I guess we'll see where the elite goes from here. Uh the House of Black is like right there. I uh best friends are there as well. Well, um, I don't know. Best best friends seem like they're on the uh, on the outs or something. Oh, it's, it's been, Rocky? There, there, there's been tension. Oh, great. Right, ever Fantastic. Since, ever since that match between uh, Trent and, uh, and Orange On Cassidy. Rampage, right? Whatever. Correct. What, what, what was he supposed to do? Let you win? It's like my dick. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought it was okay. Um, well, like, uh, it's whatever if they want to fight. That's fine. It's, it's, it seems like it's going to be a rampage exclusive anyway. So I'm I'm more interested in what they're going to do with the Lucha. Bro, I mean, with that triangle, unless unless Pox taking one of his extended vacations. This seems like a. I mean, that rain. I mean, yeah, they had the seven matches, but that was it, and it was kind of like okay, like they did. Mm-hmm. There wasn't even like real title matches, I guess. So yeah, they really weren't. Um, I don't, I don't know, know what to say. man. I feel like. I it, I don't, like, don't want to say it's like a mistake because like obviously we got to see what happens from here. But I'm just like, damn, that seems like this seems really lackluster for a Death Triangle who's never can seem to really like maintain any kind of momentum. Mm-hmm. They won the um, belts and then they got upstaged by the elite immediately and then yeah, um, they lose the belt. I feel like maybe you know, Pac could just be a single star again, and then you know, Lucha Bros can go fuck with the acclaim or something. Or go for the ROH title. That's fair. They can do that. I mean, yeah, ROH is always right there for them. So 
Um, that is also, I, I believe, I believe FTR taking some time off. I believe I saw something about that. Motherfucker, uh, no, uh, they've been granted some time off television. I was just like, motherfucker, <laughs> you were off of television for most of 2022. What the fuck you be granted? Just say you're not getting booked. Um, let's get into these quick hits and very quick. Uh, I see. I didn't find this match too bad. Uh, I think uh, Jungle Hook is actually a pretty decent team together. Uh, they should probably keep that going. Um, but Lee Moriarty and Big Bill, the firm, stinky. I, I, I'm going to say this. Um, that match needed a Big Bill because oh, he, was yeah. clearly, he was clearly the one carrying the match and maintaining that, make sure everything goes straight, especially when Hook was in the ring. There's a certain time where Hook was like, okay, what's my cue? And I mm-hmm. think if you're gonna have Hook out there, you need him in, in the ring with the vet, like like a big Bill who's been on TV, who's worked TV and know how to do this, and you know mm-hmm. been doing this for so, someone more experienced, for long, yeah, for a I long believe. for a long time. So I mean, I don't know how much experience Lee Moriarty has, but I, I mean he never worked TV either. And you know when Big Bill's the only guy working TV, you want to keep him with guys like that. I think that's why they had him with the QT Marshall, even though he never worked TV, but he had a lot of experience, or like you know. We're just doing the quick squash matches, but one thing I want out from not I don't want to see from Hook anymore from 2023. No more of the squash matches. We got let's put him with the big yes. boys now. And I think this was a good start. Let's keep him with the big boys. Don't don't have him uh, doing squashes against who who knows what's it over there. Uh, I I'll agree with all that. Um, I'm curious where both team goes. Uh, both these teams go after this. Um, I hope that they keep Jungle Hook going or like uh, Hook well. just. Backs them up because uh, what is it? It doesn't seem like Christian's coming back anytime soon. Yeah. So, uh, and then like even if they go back to each being like single stars, like just having each other's back is cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's fine. We got the women's match where Mercedes is not a part of. That's why it's a quick hit because uh, the match was whatever. It was it was fine. Um, I think we all kind of predicted what was going to happen. Hikaru Shida was going to get involved. She I tried to play the uh, oh, I threw the t- kendo stick in there, but I mean, who did I throw it in for? But ooh, ooh. Uh, um, did did it El, uh, Legado del Fantasma do that where Electra Lopez threw the brass knuckles and she was just like, yeah, oh, well, hey, oh, because that was for uh, during the Zion Quinn shit. <laughs> yeah. I threw the brass knuckles, oh, but uh, was it for the big guy yeah. I liked or for the team for the family? <laughs> For the family, yeah. Um, I'm not what, yeah, like, like we, like you said, once I saw Tony come out, I was like, okay, nothing's happening to her. Oh, like, yes, Mercedes isn't involved. Um, uh, we didn't get to hear the money song or see the money dance, the race car, the Johnny Bravo. So, with the, with the ghost pool, <laughs> not the Sasha Banks, man. Um, yeah, man. So I guess it's not happening. I guess she's probably just gonna be New Japan, you know, exclusive. Um, she might pop up at Revolution. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, and then a very stinky JS, uh, stinky promo segment with uh, the Jericho Appreciate Society and Action Andretti and Ricky Starks. Uh, not low hanging fruit but poor jokes all around this felt this felt like a a year 2001 raw promo between like jericho this, and like the this rock sound, or something. yeah like this sounds like the worst rock promo but like echoed by like seven people in the ring <laughs> yeah we, we got you know the, the usual slut shaming and ricky was off tonight it was this wasn't ricky's best best work on, on mm-hmm. like I don't know what he when he started going at Hager. I was like, this is kind of uh, dog. Right. When he started when he started going at Hager, I was just like, you you have you a list. purple hat, you purple hat wearing. You got a list. I'm like, okay. And, and he mentioned the list like a couple of times, and I was just like, is that really all you got? Like for real? Yeah. First of all, he can't even control that. It's not there. Now you're just, yeah. Now you're just shaming. Now you're just shaming. And yeah. then uh, what is it? And then all Jake Hager has to say is, I like this hat. And he got a bigger pop than anybody in that fucking room. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> like, this really segment did. was so, this segment was terrible, bro. That was, bad. Uh, it was bad. all around. Uh, all right. Let's get into New Year's Evil. 
Um, I'm I'm curious I'm I'm curious to hear why uh why it's you're really, really down on the show because I thought it was very I but if you were to say that this is this is definitely not better than last year's New Year's Evil for for a show that New Year's Evil this is bad if this was a standard episode yeah. of NXT I'd be like whatever mm-hmm. like if, if this, this was to be a big show this was bad yeah uh it's not TV special or uh, yeah I mean it is a TV special I guess it's not really a pay per view. No, that's a TV a PLE. All right, how about this? Compared to, I'm I'm going to assume this forum <laughs> show was like a TV special. Yeah, I definitely this the so, forum. So show, if, uh, if, if if we're if we if this is the war report, we're going to compare the two shows. Oh. I think AEW did a better TV special than NXT did a TV special. Is that fair I, to say? I would actually agree with that. Yeah, I'm not even I'm not even going to lie. But let's get into it. First things first, we got Jinder Mahal returning, and I swear to God, my brain turned off. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, Veer's injured still, so we had to do a replacement. And yeah, we get uh, the return of Jinder Mahal. I I didn't even know he was still employed. I'll be honest with you. I ain't see him or the tall dude, Shanky, in a minute. Oh, God, where is Shanky? Oh, is he going to show up? Shit, Shanky um, might show up. Might, we might have a whole all-brown... All um, <laughs> all brown stable yeah just in time for the saudi deal whoa, Come on, whoa. Put, see you, you didn't put two or two together right there I, i've seen the video it, <laughs> okay hold on, hold on. No, i'm just saying it's a little interesting El- El- elgato de fantasma not brown the other brown <laughs> on the other on the other hemisphere the other brown all right in brother the, in the east the eastern brown <laughs> but um but yeah i'm just saying it's a little interesting that gender comes back and I swear that as soon as that happened, the news po- the news broke on Twitter, same exact time. Look, do the math. I just want y'all to keep your third eye open. You know what I mean? They give it. They're, they're showing you the message right in front if of your Red- face. If Reddit could put that together, it's not your third eye being open, bro. Third eye is open. I didn't see that on Reddit. I seen that. That's from my third eye. I seen it. Uh, I saw. I see the vision. I don't know. I, I, I think but it, it might be Kermit. <laughs> but but not serious. Um. Yeah, I guess. I mean, no, you want to bring I don't. Down here? <laughs> I don't like this at all. Um, I don't. I I do like when they bring main roster guys down, and then you know, it's kind of like a test for the people like that. But like, nigga, gender, motherfucker, I could pass this. To, like, no, wait, why is this nigga testing me? <laughs> I mean, no, don't do that. He's the former world champion. Don't do that. Suck my dick. No, nah, what the fuck, like. Why the fuck are you why, like? Why are you the teacher, bro? This is like when the substitute like really trying to handle shit. Like this, this is the same fuck example. Out of here. It's the same example as Big Bill. Jinder Mahal has been on TV for like a decade. He knows what he's doing out there. Jinder, Jinder out Mahal, there. Jinder Mahal is not good enough to be testing Julius Creed's gangster. How about that? You said it. I mean, I'm just saying. So I need a little vet out there. Cause shit, I know who's the better wrestler between those two motherfuckers. Jinder might be able to find the hard cam. <laughs> but shit, this motherfucker could cut promos and wrestle really well. Like what, what, what man, what the fuck this nigga testing niggas for? Anyone. Thanks, man. Anyone? Anyone. That that's where I was more like, damn, they like they let him win. I guess. I'm saying. It's fucking ridiculous. So that's strike um, one on the show already. Yeah. Um, the tag team gauntlet. I'm not even gonna talk about how you spell gauntlet here. Um spell it wrong. Oh, big wrong. I'm screenshotting it too. Um, <laughs> what did I write? Did you change okay. it? Okay. So, uh, no, I did not change it. I'm keeping it uh, as gong, it gonglet. I put, one, <laughs> I put one extra letter. Uh, Speaking of bad, let's keep it going. Yeah. So, Pretty Deadly is going to have to go through a gauntlet of tag teams so they can face a new day. They get one cheap win by uh, defeating Flying Brian. Uh, the rockers, the new new rockers, the new new uh, the new rockers. Uh, no, not the new rocket. The new rockers was already a thing. The new new rockers. New, okay, the um, new rockers was Al Snow and Mario Janetti. So they beat they beat the shit out of these two, and then I was just like, okay, whatever. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I thought the shit was dumb, but actually, I, I thought it played well to their character. Then yeah, that was that was uh, fine. Yeah, it played well to their character. Then they had uh, uh, Idris and Anofe come out. Which I thought was cool. Yo, they really got my man in the shirt. <laughs> Why did he? Uh, I, I want. I hope we can get him on the podcast. I'm gonna ask him. Like, yo, 
Though when course. I when I heard that he got the WWE tattoo, I was just like, oh, whatever. Uh, I thought it was it? a troll. Well, no, I think no. it was trolling. I thought like a I, fake one or something. I, I just thought, you know, he's probably gonna get like something small because, like, what is it? <laughs> just gotta bring it back to the best show on the television right now, or the best show I'm watching right now. What is it? Oh, Bad Girls Club. She got, you know, they all got like little Bad Girls Club logos on them, or whatever. This yeah. motherfucker WWE tattoo. That's his whole. Takes that's up, his whole chest. It takes up like a whole peck. I said, "Vibe, nigga, what are you doing? <laughs> are you out of your fucking mind?" Would you would you ever tattoo your employer on yourself? No, I hate my employer. <laughs> somebody, dog, I'm telling. I really shit you not. Two insane. years, two years ago, somebody suggested that we should get like my, uh, you know, my job's logo tattooed on me, or like, and then we it would be like a friendship thing because like we met there or whatever, and I was just like, bitch, absolutely not. I got a better idea than that. I'm not putting a logo on myself. Yo, One, look. <laughs> I don't like my job. Two, I'm not paying for that. Yo, that's that. I don't know, man. That's that's a choice. And then to make it worse, yeah. he can't even he can't even show it on TV for some reason. Yeah, he he <laughs> he, 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 came, he came he came out in the shirts that Pretty Deadly be wearing. I say, all right, uh, bro, what the hell I'm, going on here? My man had the uh, Blackpool Combat Club's tracksuit on. Look, <laughs> it also. He ain't ever. He can't get a job nowhere else. Oh, uh, <laughs> where he gonna go? I mean, they don't stop making shirts. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what he should have did. He should have did the uh, the MVP route. High MVP when he first started wrestling had the whole body jo- suit joint on because he had too many mm-hmm. tattoos and stuff. Mm-hmm. They should just do that. They gonna they, they, they gonna, gonna go that route. That boy gonna wrestle in the shirt for the rest of his life, bro. I'll be mad as hell. He's in good shape too. Imagine you worked all that worked that hard to get your body looking like that. And they said you got. And now you can't see it. Put a shirt on, big dog. He, he better, he better start wearing one of them sweater crop tops, bro. You gotta show, wear the, show some you skin, bro. Wear the sweater, the sweater vest like uh, Malik did. He might switch to switch outfits. But anyway, back to, the, be mad back, as a... back to the gauntlet. The mat, the match is good. I'll say that this was this was a good match. <laughs> that um, was, this was the best part of the gauntlet. Then they they beat him, and then, uh, you know, Jensen and Braze was supposed to come out. And then Gallus comes out, and I said, "Oh, well." First thing I said, "Oh man, that's good that the uh, the visa issue is over." And then I yeah. went, "Oh no, <laughs> come on!" And then they and then they beat pretty dead, pretty deadly, um, pretty decisively, which makes me wonder: is that the end? Is this, this are we writing off pretty deadly? You know, going forward, I would fucking it? hope. I would fucking hope so. They did. They did work a main roster house show recently, so I mean, that could be something. That could be nothing. But um. I'm praying. Yeah, something. I hope so. Otherwise, if you just job these guys out for no reason, that seems and you waste like forty minutes doing it. It seems kind of re- pointless. That that gauntlet was a pre- it was a pretty long segment of the show. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Minutes, I, I don't I, know I, for forty minutes, but I, it was it was a good amount of time. There was a you could pitch a lot of matches to me for the new day to face as like tag champs or whatever, but them versus Gallus is not something that I really particularly wanted to see. I know, uh, what is it? I know you said in the chat that you're pretty high on Gallus. I'm not really. No, 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 no. I'm high on Wolfgang. Oh, the other, yeah, the other sorry, two guys, sorry. get them out of here. Okay. Um, Gallus kind of, I know wins and losses don't like matter in WWE, but uh, these guys left 0-3. Oh, they lost all last year. All yeah. the whole Gallus. They were getting their asses whooped all last year. So I I like just maybe, just maybe they can just get like one or two wins before even looking at the new days like direction. Uh two or two or three. Um I don't know. I I, I thought this was like whatever. Um and then like if they would have beat uh Jigs and Brent uh Jensen and Briggs, it would have just been like, oh, you beat them. I beat them as well, so we're kind of like on an equal playing field, or like you know, I'm ju- I'm just as good as you, and yeah. we beat them after beating you know uh, one and a half other tag teams. So I mean, that would have been interesting, but it is what it is. I didn't really particularly like that, and I don't know how good. Well, I thought the New Day stuff with uh pretty deadly was like actually pretty funny, pretty entertaining. I'm not seeing that shit coming out of Gallus. 
It seems like they're about to get cooked on the mic for like ten minutes. I right? would just, I was just gonna say this. This is definitely gonna be a test for Gallus to see if they can keep up with the new day. Maybe not in ring. I think in ring they're fine, but mm-hmm. everything Talking. else, yeah. Because you you're dealing, like, you're dealing with two vets on the mic who who really are really good at it. Dog. So you got to step it up. I will, I will never forget when AJ Styles and Kofi Kingston were like feuding for a little bit. Kofi Kofi Kingston was cooking the Yo, fuck out of AJ Styles to, on a SmackDown. To be, to be fair, Kofi can cook most people. Like no, not I know lot, not a lot of people better than nah. him. On, <laughs> I I know I know, but like dog, he was flaunt dog. AJ Styles was flustered in that motherfucker, bro. <laughs> I, I I was like, this is crazy. But uh, next, we get our NXT title match. Uh, Braun Breaker versus Grayson Waller. Now, I will say, when that second turn, stupid, when, that se- when that second turn buckle broke the first time, I said, this match is heat rock, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hell no. Nah. And they was trying to fix that motherfucker in picture in picture, bro. I said, this shit some heat. This shit so fire, bro. Then my second thought was, who the fuck ain't reinforced this shit? I knew That's it wasn't working. I, I knew I knew it wasn't yeah. working. I knew it wasn't working. That doesn't happen. Very, I've never. I don't give. I've maybe one time I've seen it not be. It was like actual shoot broke. Well. The t- like the top one breaking is that to me that's usually the signifier that oh that was like you know probably not like the second one the second one breaking is just like that's weird not the top one um that's why i was just like oh that's kind of like bizarre then i was just like even if i got worked i loved it (laughs) uh the rest of this match i i don't know what's happening here um i thought the wrestling was like uh, after that commercial break i thought the rest of the match was like pretty decent and then grayson waller you know i don't even know why you would try to crab walk on the second rope when that shit just I mean, broke, he does that. That's just one of his. That's his move. But I, I think it's so. I probably, like, I probably would have adjusted it for the situation. They really had me in the first half. Yeah, then they they didn't stick the landing on this one at all. I think ending that match on a count out on a show that's supposed to be like a big show was whack. It was whack, and I just like I, I'm sure they, they obviously they did it to go to the steel cage match, but they could have. I think they could have had a more controversial finish. Mm-hmm. Figured out a way to make it a little bit more controversial instead of doing the the whack count out. It just it made it made Grayson look goofy, like Braun look. Mm-hmm. It, doesn't look it doesn't make Braun look good. And this is another situation of just I think just the theme of this episode is just Shawn Michaels overthinking shit and just like I don't know if it's Shawn, but whoever is you know putting placing these matches together or whatever, it's just like yo, you you don't have to do all this extra shit to get to where you want to get to like just you know mm-hmm. keep it busy that's what we like about nxt storylines they're not they're not convoluted most of the time it's pretty old school storytelling like you don't have to do all the extra stuff you know what i mean like i think the way that last week aew handled their tag team matches with you know um jeff jarrett and jay lethal versus the acclaimed and how they were able to make the first match build up to the second match that they had a battle of the belts and it made sense. And, you know, they had a screwy, a controversial finish. And it didn't make either side look bad in the process. Mm-hmm. I think NXT did the complete opposite with this match. I think both of them came out looking worse in this match. And it makes me less interested in the steel cage match at Vintage Day, which is unfortunate. So this is uh, a situation I think they overthought it and they didn't need to. I, 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 I don't know. I wouldn't say that I'm not excited to see the steel cage because I, I you know, I think I'm. Cause after that, I was just thinking, like, what? How good is this match going to be without the bullshit and the shenanigans of like a talk, like you know everything that was happening in this match? So I was just like, I can't wait to see a match without it, you know. But that's personal. But like, I completely agree with like this. This is not good. That wasn't good stuff. And I completely clocked out after that. And then that wasn't. And then I then the women came out, and I was like, oh fuck, that wasn't the main event. <laughs> like it, it completely like kind of like ejecto seed me out of uh out of really paying attention yeah to the it was show. just like it was like oh that's a letdown because i was I, looking forward to the match and i was like oh that's, yeah it wasn't like, like uh it wasn't like a. that's what i'm saying if this was a regular episode of nxt i'd be like okay that's whatever you know what i mean mm-hmm. but because it's new year's evil i was just i had higher expectations for the match and i was yeah. i guess maybe i just i was just let down like that that's that's it no okay. i i i i would say i was definitely let down on this show uh mm, it just wasn't as good as like 
the previous New Year's Evil, if you just need to compare it to that. And like it's all and it's kind of just on par, if not worse, than the AEW episode this week. So no, this this was this was way worse than the AEW episode this week. What do you mean? Uh eh. You know, you know, I'm not too I like because you know I always feel like AEW never like really uh, has momentum really, but nah, I the wrestling in this uh, episode is kind of like meh, and then the stories are kind of meh, or like I guess like the con- the sort of conclusion or the next act of these stories are just like eh. Uh, but now let's get to the 19 women battle royale. I think it's 20. It should have been 20. 20. Is 20? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this was all the names down in the damn thing. Yeah, Twenty. Okay. Um, like I said, I was kind of out of it. Yeah, by like this I, point, I, just, I was kind of, I was kind of over the show. I, I'll tell you right now. All I saw was Alba Fire get eliminated, Andy Hartwell get eliminated, and then the final elimination. I did not care. Yeah. Um, it was cool. So everybody got all the ladies got some ring time. They main event. Um, yeah, I saw Cora. I seems like they're kind of pushing towards Cora. And um, who was it? Damn, who was the other person? Was it Zoe? It wasn't Zoe, was it? Val- Valkyrie. Oh, Valkyrie is right. Wow. So I mean, that's uh, that should be something. Saw that in a gift. Um, there, there was, there were, cool. they're, they're building some things up. Um, oh, Zoe Stark and Wendy Chu is who I, who they mm-hmm. kind of with. I, 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 I would say just from a little bit of that I saw, I like that this battle royale was more than just to determine a number one com- like contender. It, it was just like, this is where you motherfuckers are going. Yeah. Which, <laughs> now that uh, you did, NXT, uh, NXT oh, is very good at that. NXT is yeah. very good at doing that. They um, did that the last, the last woman's battle royale. They did the same thing. Yeah. So it was just like, okay, you know, you're not going for the title, but this is what you're going to be doing next. Like it was giving a lot of people direction. I would, I will absolutely give it that. And I'm personally not mad at the winner, at the winners of this i actually thought it was actually fun and creative and you know it kind of you know swerved expectations a little bit and i thought it was even better that it's you know royal rumble season so we see this sort of thing all the time and they'd be like you my tag partner but i'm gonna get you out of here but these two were determined to like not eliminate each other and then it was just like well they're not gonna ring the bell until one of (laughs) us get the fuck up out of here so they said they shook hands and said, "All right, let's scrap," and then they both won, and I thought that was cool. Or did they both lose? Um, I saw JC was getting them way more cheers than Gigi was. People they like JC. They were they were cheering for JC. JC was the black sheep in Toxic Attraction. I remember them days, man, and I was just like, "Let's just give it time, fellas." I think she, she, I think she had the glow up. Let, let's let's wait and see. Oh, she. Blowed up insanely in ring, yeah. face promo. Like both these two, like this is kind of a graduation for both these. I I, I feel you know they just to keep the the, the, the report said. in school theme, not really war themed. Um, no, nah, I, th- I, th- I, th- I thought it was cool that they both won. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I saw what is that? I saw on the chat earlier today. It was like uh, they were comparing like the iconics being in the match with Oscar and Nikki Cross uh, in that like uh, fatal four way, and shit. Obviously, they're gonna be jumping the shit out of Cora until I mean uh, Roxanne until Roxanne. they can't. And I think that's gonna be like we didn't see the betrayal here, like you know necessarily a like the usual battle royale rumble betrayal here, but like we're gonna have to see them kind of like clash actually at. Yeah. Uh, that title match so i'm looking forward to that that's probably the only thing i'm looking forward coming out of this nxt episode really. oh shout out to shout out to um so ruka she did really good in the, in the oh yeah too. i believe but, uh, she eliminated zoe stark i thought yeah she did and then and then okay yeah, okay yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, i'm remembering more than i uh than i'm leading on yeah. but i <laughs> I, re- I, re- I i shit you know i was really not paying attention to this match um but nah, that's it. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, quick hits. We get Dijak versus Tony D. I thought this match was actually pretty cool. I'm I'm still just like Tony D'Angelo wrestling how he do does not really correlate with his gimmick. You could you you you're expecting him to be like a like a brawler. Shady. But, but he, I mean that's not him. He's he's an amateur. Shady wrestler. like 
shadier, kind of like you know, mischievous. You want him to cheat? You want him to cheat a little more? I, not I cheat enough. Well, like cheat enough. Not n- okay. He cheats, but I think that maybe he should get like a little more like street fightery, little brawl. Like yeah, you want you want you want to be you want to be a brawler. That's what I'm saying. Not, I'm not saying 100 percent brawling, but I'm just uh. Actually, I, I think I mentioned it uh, in the last Tony D'Angelo match that I was just like, man, he should like, I think he should really be a brawler instead of like this heavy, like, you know, Kurt Angle fucking but he's a game, game type. That's, that's yeah, no, is. I get it. But then I saw him start throwing punches and I was just like, oh man, these punches are so ass. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I mean. If, I, if the way he wrestles is not going to change, then I think the gimmick should change. This or, is, or, or he's an alpha to, academy ass motherfucker, bro. Or or make him a face. Uh yeah. Maybe, maybe uh which maybe they're, they're kind of doing. I the, the I, finish the finish was interesting. Have they have they maybe we could weave in his amateur wrestling into the mafia shit they, have they, they tried did that? but yeah, that's how that's how it started they, they, his gimmick initially was like yeah i was an amateur wrestler but i had to work then with he the became, family oh I nah. mean, was, yeah, so i i I, I, I think i would he's still an amateur wrestler i think i would have preferred that he was in always K, with the family in cape babe he's a he's a he's okay an amateur wrestler so. no, no 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 that was cool no i i just thought like maybe he was always with the mafia and then they were just like nah we you know you little you you muscle you feel me and then he picked up wrestling Nah, you know, you know, like you ever like you know, like the kid in the hood that was like really good at something. So all the all like the uh, like oh, the, the hood motherfuckers, they, yeah. all they, they 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 like like oh he yeah, cool, he keep cool, playing football, man. man. Yeah, he keep playing football, or whatever. He keep playing the tuba. <laughs> that that's what Tony D'Angelo was as a family. Like yeah, niggas good, was man. not fucking with the tuba, bro. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck niggas was on. If you're nice with it, uh, but you know what I mean. Like they were probably just like, look, you do your thing over there in the little amateur wrestling gym. We got it here. But when you know when you turn eighteen. You got to put the work in. You got to put the work in now. And then that motherfucker got graduated with his bachelor's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sign. But yeah. no, I, I think that I actually do think that Tony D'Angelo is really good in the ring. I just think that like his uh, character kind of clashes with it. That's the like the short ver- like the short version of it. Um, We'll see. Uh, Well, Dijak wins. So uh, it'll be Wesley versus Dijak. I don't know if Wesley loses here or if Tony D'Angelo gets involved again, or maybe uh, Stax gets involved again because he couldn't in this match. Um, mm. And then he'd be like, you know, I've, I've, I fucked that up. So you could get that opportunity again. Cause you deserve it boss. And he was like, I'm not your boss. I'm your family. Uh, I thought that was cute. <laughs> yeah. And then see, then see you again played in the background. Yeah, he 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 he, he took he, he took that bullet for him. He said, "You're not a you're not a hired goon, man. Your family and they shoved brother. the shit shoved the shit out of him and ate that motherfucker." <laughs> Sorry, would you do that for me? Uh, I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I feel like a, that big boot would really hurt. Yeah. <laughs> no, his family. I don't know, man. We do this every week, man. Come on, man. I don't know. I I, I don't even know if I do that for my brothers, honestly. <laughs> Zero, brother. Me either. Shit. If, Me I, either. if 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 I had to choose between them motherfuckers taking a kick in the face and me, <laughs> me, you got it, buddy. You got it. You got you it. First. <laughs> Let me know how hard that shit hurt, bro. Um. All right. Next, we get the the very disappointing return of Tiffany Stratton. I thought this, we were singing her praises, bruh. I like the character. I like how she was talking already. It, you know, the daddy little rich girl thing, yes, it had a ceiling. It could have went away. But I think the way that she's talking, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to use this word, but, you know, Bimbo Stratton has an even shorter ceiling. I was going to say, I was going to say Valley girl. I wasn't going to say. And it's, and it's, and it's it's damn near the same character. It's, it's a very slight tweak, but she just, she talks, she talks slower. That's it. Like that's terrible. And then, you know, I, she was a a really good talker when she was like with Grayson talking shit, uh, you know, talking about shit about Saray. Uh, I know some of them were pre-tapes. I, I know some of them were pre-tapes when she was talking about Wendy Chu and like stuff like that. But like when she was out there and she forgot her lines and she was like a deer in headlights, I said, where'd she go? Keep it a stack with you. I think 
Grayson and Tiffany probably need each other. I think both of them need someone to play off of. And I think that'd be a great to just keep them, put them back together. Personally. I thought to, when Tiffany, when they broke off, I thought Tiffany start was doing great. And then Waller was like floundering. Now they both floundering together. So maybe put they should together. come back. Put yeah. them back together. Like one, one, one can't do well. And like, they both can't do well at the same time. <laughs> um, but nah, and then she said that, you know, Oh, we got some breaking yeah. news. You, Wait, hold on. Let me, uh, let, okay. let me finish. Okay. Uh, okay. And then she put she she put the locker room on notice. So I was just like, I don't the, care. Yeah. <laughs> what I said, it's okay. I don't know. Maybe they should have just returned her and, and then like her previous character. And then like she wins the battle royale. And then like, even if she loses, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I would have been fine. She just won the battle royale. That's what All I right. thought was going to happen. But break, breaking news me, bro. Um, Brian Daniels is opponent for next week. Do you have any guesses? It's been announced. Dante Martin. Close. Kind of. In the uh, same realm. <laughs> Leo Rush? No. Uh, his brother, I'll Darius? You, I'll, no, I'll give you one more guess. Uh, uh, no, I saw it earlier on Twitter. Bandito, right? Oh, you already saw it? Damn. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I saw a van talk about it. Oh, fucking Dante Martin is not in the same range as fucking Bandito. They're, they're, the they're, dark. they're, mm-hmm. they're all on dark. They're all on dark or... or, or whatever no nah, so. because bandito be hitting his shit dante martin don't oh god um dante martin uh, won the six hundred thousand dollar battle i think yeah here a little but a little christmas bonus bread you know what you i'm me? not gonna laugh at that i could use a little 600 right now yeah man um, let me tell you <laughs> the hank walker charles dempsey thing boy what was this <laughs> ass that was get that shit out of here Get Hank Walker off my screen. Bob. I don't know what it, I don't. I don't want to do this. What are we doing here, Ray? When, when, uh, I think it, the exact moment when Vic Joseph, Vic Joseph was just like Booker. What do you mean? He he was a uh, he was a security guard, and now he's trying to be a better wrestler for a better life. I said, let me mute this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bro. I, I love Vic Joseph. But shit. I was just like, all right, come on now, let's stop it. Um. And then we get vignettes for Tyler Bate. I missed the Tyler Bate one. I'm not gonna lie, but I saw the Stevie Turner one, and I thought that I thought that one was fun and cute. You know, I think it's so funny that at one point Twitch streaming was banned, and now it's a whole gimmick. <laughs> she she turned into Julia from Tekken, bro. She a Twitch streamer now. That shit hard. That's stupid. <laughs> that shit also, hard, I, don't, I don't. I mean, Stevie Turner. She's. She was fine in AEW. I don't. I mean, not AEW. Um, UK. I don't really. I could like if you ask me to name a Stevie Turner match from UK. I could I mean, uh, she didn't. She didn't have many. Um, then she was, uh, and then she had that feud with Z- uh, Zaya Brookside. And I'll tell you right now, I ain't never liked Zaya Brookside. And I'll tell you right now, Stevie Turner's still here. The other ones in stardom. So we know who in the ghetto, bro. Also, um, um, I'm. I was shocked to learn that uh, Aaliyah James is still hired by the WWE. <laughs> I did not know. Yeah, Noam Dar too. Noam Dar as well. I had no idea either those guys. Either of them were still in the company, but I guess I'm not are. gonna lie. I wasn't a big fan of Noam Dar, but I think the longer he stayed at NXT UK, he really showed that he's like valuable in some shape or fashion. That boy can no work. Difference. I'll give you. I'll give you that. He can work. Yeah, I I, I, I rock. I rock work. with the kid. I I like this little um, run he had with the um with the with the trophy, the cup. I forgot what it was. The Heritage Cup. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that is it for NXT. I'm excited to. Excuse me. I'm excited to see all the uh. All the NXT UK folks come back except Gallus. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then we got to step it up. That wraps it up for us. Um, you can follow us uh, on Twitter uh, at the A Show RNC. You can follow Quan at the Comeback Spot. You can follow me, uh, Cyrus, on uh, Cyrus on TWR. All the information and stuff is on the show notes, like our Patreon, charity, YouTube, Instagram page, all that. Uh, lock in with us, man. Uh, we really love all the support that we've been getting already uh, on the Instagram account. Um, people know I do a podcast now because we have the Instagram account. <laughs> um, right. So that that's cool. A, a lot of people were just like, you do? Or like they actually understand what they're seeing now, now that it's on like, uh, they have the A-Show network there. Um, so that's great. That's fantastic. Um, you want to do our Patreon segment? Uh, do you have anything prepared? 
Yeah, the questions that you asked last week. Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. If you're not subscribed on Patreon, uh, subscribe on Patreon. Me and Quan are going to have our little wish list for uh, AEW and NXT, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to hear that conversation, head over to uh, patreon.com forward slash the A Show RNC. Put down five dollars, and then you can hear all about it. If you're, if you say, "Man, I'm good," all right, man, I'll see your ass next week, man. <laughs>